egg. Hey, this is a fine time to wake a poor working girl. Oh, honey, I wouldn't have called if it hadn't been important. Would you like to ride a chartered flight at 7.20 this morning? Sure. No, are you kidding? This is my day off. Do you know what time it is? Funny, I'd have bet you've been on this flight. Oh, I forgot to tell you, an acquaintance of yours is piloting. Big, tall, handsome. His first name Bill? Why didn't you say so? 7.20? I'll be there. But your day off. I can get someone else. Thanks, Big. I've really got to hurry. your hurry, miss. Hurry? Who's in a hurry? Oh, good morning, Mr. Potter. Have my passenger list? Hmm? Mr. Arnold, just one passenger from here? Yep, we got two stops. Pick up Duncan, Casey, and Harmon en route. En route where? I thought you didn't care. Here comes your passenger. Uh, Mr. Arnold? Yes, good morning. Good morning. I'm expecting rather an important message. Has it come? No, sir, not yet. But it may come en route. We'll be leaving in just a minute. Would you please fasten your safety belt? Certainly. I would appreciate something to put my papers on. Oh, surely. I'll get you a table just as soon as we take off. Will there be anything else? No, thank you. Oh, about that message. Will you tell the pilot? Yes, of course. Did you make our passenger comfortable? Don't I always? Oh, by the way, he's expecting a radio message. So? Who is he anyhow? I don't know. Important papers, radio messages. Is he a veep or something? Maybe he's a secret agent. You'd better keep your eye on him. Certainly, Captain. No message yet, hmm? Not yet. Well, then, sit down. Let's chat. Thanks. Do you travel a great deal? No. As a matter of fact, I've been pretty much confined to this area the past few years. Where do you live? Oh, this is my home. That is, I mean, down there. One of the girls in dispatching and I share an apartment in the new Collingswood section. I suppose it's what you call typical modern living for the average American. Furnished apartment. Oh, very nicely furnished and almost new. And we're gadget hounds, so there's nothing made that we don't have. Oh, really, that's very interesting. Perhaps you're just the person I needed to run into this morning. Well, we didn't give you much choice. <laughs> you could help me in my work. I'd like to try, but not knowing your business, may I inquire? You may. It's plastics. Oh. Now, according to the training course, I'm supposed to say, oh, that must be very interesting. Is it really? It is. Do you know anything about plastics? Oh, it just so happens I'm an expert. I have a new plastic hairbrush. Well, go on. Oh, there are loads of things. Um, oh, this tabletop. 
There must be other things on the plane. The coffee cups and the trays. Oh, that's very good. You know, it pays to talk to an expert. And so early in the morning, too. And then at home, there's our kitchen strainer, the hair curlers, and my shower curtain. That's plastic, isn't it? Vinyl plastic. More durable, waterproof, won't mildew. And to think I bought it because I like the pattern. How do you like this pattern? Don't tell me that's... Plastic. Fade-resistant color, can't ravel, fray, or wrinkle. Is that you some, miss? Sorry, afraid we're already equipped. All airplanes are. For example, the intricate wiring system has plastic insulation. Well, how about the pilot's control knobs? Very good. You get a double point for that. Double point? What do you mean? It's a game. You get double points for the toughies. Plastics hidden behind the scenes. Like the plane's bulkheads, little known things. Um, how much for a plastic playing card? One point. Toilet articles, plastic bottle tops, things like that. When they're too obvious, you get only half a point. There must be lots of double points up in the cockpit. More all the time. And not only on planes, but on all means of transportation. Take your car, for example. Ever make a fast stop? You should have seen me this morning. I was really in a hurry, and then one of those lights changed. <laughs> was I glad I had good brakes. Well, now... You might not have been able to stop that easily before brake linings were plastic bonded. Phenolic resins are one of the keys to safety stops. Brakes that hold, but don't lock. And for years, automobile distributor caps have been molded from plastics. And that's not mentioning colorful seat covers of the upholstery in your own convertible, or the molded trim and welting. Why, you can actually say that a modern car starts, runs, and stops with plastics in one form or another. Better vision in cars today, too. You're right. My windshield's larger. And it remains clearer. But I don't suppose you're old enough to remember the problems we had with the first safety glass. Oh, yes, I do. The glass in my dad's car got so discolored and hazy, you could hardly see through it. That was before safety glass was perfected, with vinyl plastic sheeting sandwiched between two pieces of glass. Score a double point for you. Say, I've got one. My large rear view window. That's all plastic, I know. Flexible vinyl sheeting, to be specific. Here's where I pick up some fast half points on you. There's my horn button and the cigarette lighter. Well, half a point is right. That's all you get for gadgets. I like plastic gadgets. They're useful. They are, but plastics were doing important work long before people found their usefulness for gadgets. Well, it's a point and a half, anyhow. That was just on my ride to the airport. Remember, this is a new game for me, and I'm sure you've been playing it for years. But you could win on half points alone if you merely listed the things you two girls have in your apartment. Start this morning when you're waking. What's the first thing you saw? Nothing very clearly. It was awfully early. Perhaps you were wakened by an alarm clock or a clock radio cased in molded styrene. I could have been, but it was the phone. Made of baked light plastic. My turn. There's my vinyl plastic shower curtain and cap and my new hairbrush. And don't forget the molded phenolic closure on your tube of toothpaste. And the molded urea covers on your cosmetic jars are those squeezable spray bottles made of polyethylene. Your refrigerator is full of plastics, too. My refrigerator? Both inside and out. It's full of plastics no matter what makes you happy. And the extruded vinyl door gasket helps to keep the cold inside. You probably have those flexible ice cube trays made of plastic. And the popular new styrene food containers for perishables. There are water coolers. Fruit juice containers. And special bottle caps. Aren't some bottle caps made of metal? Yes. But even the metal ones have a vinyl plastic seal inside to prevent oxidation and spoilage. Paper milk bottle caps and milk cartons are coated with tasteless, odorless vinylite resin to make them leak-proof. By the way, do you have an electric toaster? Do I? It's a wonder I didn't burn my fingers on it the way I was hurrying around this morning. Plastic phenolic handles kept you from burning yourself. When did you use an iron last? Oh, practically every night when I'm home. Well, then you know how the molded plastic handle fits your hand and insulates you against heat and electricity. 
It's less tiring, too, because it's so much lighter. Or take something simple, like a bread wrapper. Plastics again. Bread wrapper? But I thought they were made of wax paper. They are. The polyethylene resin is added to the wax to make the paper coating stronger and to provide a stronger heat seal that ensures a tight package. Well, then, if it's used in bread wrappers, it must be good for dozens of other things. You're right. When polyethylene is used in the form of thin films, it makes ideal packaging material for frozen foods. Now, let's see. Peg and I bought a new broom with plastic bristles. Styrene would be correct. And the other evening when Bill came over and Peg brought Harry, he's our co-pilot. And Bill, I presume, is our captain? Yes, he's our captain. Well, we had supper and Harry... Harry spilled something. Don't worry, Harry. The table of the cloth is waterproof. Yep, but the varnish. What about the heat? Can't seem to hurt that either. Or the floor? Not even the floor. We're practically indestructible around here. Hmm. How am I doing? Let's see, that's uh, the tablecloth, tabletop, kitchen floor, and the plastic radio. Oh, and all our dishes and water tumblers. Well, then you served on plastic, too. Oh, yes. Peg had a set before I moved in. I like it. It's so practical and so colorful. And we don't have to worry about Harry dropping anything breakable. Is he apt to? Oh, oh, don't worry. He's a wonderful co-pilot. But he's, well, just big. Apparently, your tabletop and floor coating are made of one of the modern plastics. Well, that must be true of all our furniture, because we never seem to have any damage. Tell me, do you have television? Of course. But sometimes when the boys come over, we just play records. Harry's very musical. And Peg loves to dance. But Harry just likes to sit and listen. He hates to dance. and I, well, we just like to listen, too. You see, we have plastics all around us. Do I win? In this game, everybody wins. <laughs> that calls for coffee all around. Any message? No, sir. Something important? Well... To me, yes. I understand you're quite a dancer. Yeah, I'm quite a... What? Coffee. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Here's one for Bill. Thanks. Boy, these cups sure are a dream to handle. Score two points for Harry. Mm -hmm. Two points? For what? <laughs> <laughs> Casey has already bought it. Oh, thank you. Well, have a nice trip. Bye, honey. Bye, Dad. We'll bye. see you when you get back. Oh, goodbye, goodbye to you. Goodbye. You. goodbye. Uh, yeah, yeah, you are. Uh, you do, too. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Now, you be a good boy, won't you, huh? Yeah. Yes, bye. Come back. Grandpa! 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 You forgot something. You forgot your raincoat. Good gracious, so I did. And you forgot to kiss oh, the ducker, too. Oh, God. Oh, um, you, you better do it for me. <laughs> All right. Go on, boys. Magazine? Uh, no, thank you. You, sir? Would you like something to read? No, thanks. Those grandchildren of mine exhaust me. Young lady, would you get me a blanket? Why, certainly. 
And tell uh, my friends Arnold and Casey there to take all phone calls for at least an hour. <laughs> I have an important message. I'm hungry. Well, you don't have to scare us half to death. I'll get you something in just a minute. Thank you. Uh, miss, uh, may I see that tray, please? Why, certainly. Is anything wrong? I'm not sure. Is there something else you'd like? You wouldn't have a micrometer, would you? Oh, <laughs> of course you wouldn't. Is he always like that? A very dangerous case. We have to humor him. You know what he's doing? I'm afraid to guess. He's trying to break your tray. If he succeeds, no one knows what might happen. Good heavens. You see, his company made that tray. It was designed for strength, lightness, and durable finish. Even a simple plastic item like a tray is built to exacting standards. Everybody seems to like them. Casey isn't everybody. <laughs> He's certainly giving it a battle. I noticed you all wear buttons with SPI on them. What does SPI mean? Something like FBI. Sure, and I'm mad at Harry. Give me five points if I guess what SPI stands for. Ten points. Society of Plastic Institute. Society of the Plastics Industry. No score. Mr. Casey, how about giving that tray another test? Did I miss something? How about heaping it high with a nice, warm lunch? <laughs> no, thank you. Later. But uh, sit down, young lady. I want to talk to you. I warn you, miss. You'll deliver a lecture. This tray is a small item, but it's a fine illustration of why plastics are used for so many things. That's because plastics come in such a wide variety. They can be soft and stretchable, or hard and rigid, opaque and heavy, or transparent and light. Manufacturers like myself set up the requirements. Plastic material manufacturers make just the right plastic for that specific job. Now, uh, take this tray. You might think we just say, we're going to make airline trays. Give us a standard material. Oh, oh, no. In many cases, we tell them just exactly what that tray must be like, and they develop a formula exactly suited to that particular tray. Say, young lady, are you listening to me? Oh, I'm so sorry. The music did distract me. <laughs> Seems to remind you of something. Oh, no, no, nothing like that. I was just thinking how wonderful it is. Here we are, flying along in space, and listening to music miles below. Nothing remarkable about it. Simple scientific fact. Planes radio picks up the music from a radio transmitter. Of course, it might be a network relay, and they can be pretty complicated. In fact, most people take sound transmission and even picture for granted today. And in recording the music as well. Well, that might be a record they're playing there now. Oh, I'm certain it is. Since you're so positive, I can further assure you the recording is on vinyl plastic. And plastics also figure in cutting the master disc, even in the recording equipment itself. Why, if you wanted to go all the way back, plastics may have had a hand in setting the deal with the recording artist who made that record in the first place. You've seen the telephone lines from the air, but what you can't see is the coaxial cable that hooks up the whole nation in one amazing telephone network. Uh, the coaxial cable uses plastics too? Every form of communications depends upon plastics. TV, radio, the telephone, telegraph, Phonograph recordings, teletype, everything. Arnold, are you keeping score? Uh, to a degree. If you really want to see plastics at work, you should get behind a great metropolitan telephone switchboard sometime. Literally millions of tiny parts function only because of plastics. Oh, that 
That was wonderful. The music or my friend's lecture on plastics? Why, both, of course. Uh, sit down, miss. I'm not through. You uh, know anything about that coastline down there? Yes, sir. Would you like to know where we are? Oh, I know where we are. But do you see those oil derricks out in the water? That oil equipment is protected against seawater, crude oil, air, sunlight, and most acids by vinyl and phenolic resins. And that oil tanker down there, its hull and topside are protected with marine paints made from synthetic resins. In fact, you can say that all the way from the oil well, plastics play a big part in getting the fuel to your car. They'd certainly let me know by this time. Now they're even repainting bridges nowadays with longer lasting plastic resin paints. And the saving in maintenance becomes a saving for the taxpayer. And there's cable underneath that water. Cable that you can't even see. Insulated with plastics to ensure longer life. We ought to give Mr. Casey lots of points. Uh, what's that? Your game, Arnold. I am. Uh, oh, I should be keeping score. Look. You see that railroad yard down there? Plastics protect those freight cars, too. Corrosion-resistant coatings based on resins do the trick, inside and out. Tank cars or resin lines protect the contents and at the same time to prevent the contents from damaging the metal tanks. Industrial containers are lined with these coatings too. And that goes from a thousand gallon vat down to a 12 ounce beer can. How many points, Arnold? Not bad for an amateur. I'm simply overwhelmed. Oh, I was conscious of plastics before, in my apartment, in the car, gadgets. I never dreamed they were so really indispensable to industry, and so many kinds. How did we ever get along without them? We did for centuries. But our biggest industrial growth has taken place in the past 40 years. And it's significant that the science of plastics is just about that old. I suppose it's because plastics do so many things better. And so many more things. That's why plastics are used in place of natural materials. It would never occur to the average person switching on a light that plastics are used not only in the switch and the wiring, but in the cement that holds the glass bulb in the metal base. See that electric plant down there? How about the power transmitters and the big generators, transformers, and other installations? Casey will top me every time. But please, gentlemen. Plastics can't do everything better. Now, can they honestly? That's true. And it's one of the jobs of the plastics industry to see that just the right plastic is used in the right application. You see, plastics can be made in such an infinite variety. They're almost like metal that way. Just as some metals are good for one thing and not another, so are plastics. Take an airplane propeller. You'd never think of making a propeller out of lead metal all right but a very special kind of metal made for a special purpose that's the way it is with plastics we wouldn't think of using the same material for shower curtains that we use for telephones yet both are plastic the right plastic has properties that make it superior your ship's captain bill adams i have a very important message for one of you gentlemen mr arnold yes yes i'm arnold what is it you're a grandfather a grandfather? Twice. Twice? Yep. Twin girls and Lila's doing fine. Signed, Mother. How do you like that? Twin girls. So that was the missing message. It's wonderful. It's remarkable, Arnold. Truly remarkable. It's a phenomenon. What do you mean, phenomenon? It's my daughter. Did you hear that, Dunk? Two little girls. Uh-huh. OK, gentlemen, we're about to pick up our last passenger, so please fasten your safety belts. We'll take a little extra time on the ground so you can phone if you wish. Thank you. Seriously, I have never seen three people more wrapped up in their business. It's a terrific business. And you're a terrific airline hostess. You with your nurses training just now learning about plastics. Well, I do remember they always use plastic bottle stoppers and waterproof sheeting and pillowcases. Mm, that's more like it. And lots of other important things, too. Like the tubing used in giving blood plasma and uh, transparent, non-flammable oxygen tents, and all that sort of thing. So there, 
see if you can top that. Now, don't get me started on plastic. <laughs> Go on, name one. I'll bet you can't score two little half points. Okay, but stop me before I go on for hours. How about controls and communications that bring a plane up and down and tell if it's safe to land? How about radar and de-icers and cable insulators? The seat the pilot sits in, the floor of the plane, and the vinyl film that safeguards all kinds of overseas shipments. Okay, I'll... okay. I guess I have been a little dumb. Well, I guess we can't all be experts. Oh, here comes good old Grandpa Arnold. And our last passenger. A Mr. Harmon. Don't tell me he's a plastics man, too. Could be. I can put that with the other luggage, Mr. Harmon. Oh, no thanks, miss. He's like a dog with a bone, Miss Reardon. No one can take the world's future designs away from Harmon. Oh, may I see? Oh, I'm sorry, miss. Just some new designs in the concept stage. Concept stage? That's the excuse when the job needs a little engineering. <laughs> I'd love to see them. Well, I can't show these designs to anyone yet. But I can tell you what he really means. I happen to be very much interested. Well, then, design means the shape of things. A really well-designed industrial shape is both attractive and functional. Good to look at, easy to use, right? Now, before we had plastics, Design was limited by the characteristics of natural materials. Wood, stone, metal, etc. What you could do, design-wise, depended upon the inherent strength, hardness, flexibility, color, and all that. But along came plastics and changed everything. Gave designers a whole new world of materials. Now they could create really new shapes and forms. And leave it to engineers like my plastic friends here to develop just the right materials to make them truly functional. Why, it was a revolution. A facelifting for almost everything we use in daily life. Why, it wasn't so long ago that your mother had to jockey a big, heavy contraption like this around the house, banging the furniture and wearing out the rugs. Sure, designers had done the best they could with the materials at hand. But plastics cured all that. I'll say they did. Why, I can clean our whole place in a jiffy. Light as a feather and good looking, too. Because the designer could work in plastics. Or take telephones. Early designers had no choice but to make them clumsy and inconvenient. I'll bet you don't even remember that kind. Oh, yes, I do. Grandma still has one. But along came plastics again. And designers would create something light, functional, and good looking because... Just a minute. You make it sound too easy. Do you realize it took engineers 15 years to evolve the right design and materials for your modern phone? The goodwill of millions of telephone subscribers was at stake. We had to be right. Even office furniture could be revitalized. Not only an eye appeal and greater working efficiency, but woods laminated with plastic resins last longer. They don't warp, and it takes less fine finished woods to manufacture them. In an age when we have to conserve wood, that's important. Oh, I could go on for hours about the hundreds of design items that plastics have made possible. There's a never-ending parade of electrical appliances, for example, in which good looks are even less important than the heat protection and insulation that makes them so completely safe to use. And there are a lot of instances where plastics have been a perfect replacement for other materials. And these uses are becoming greater every day. But we designers aren't deliberately trying to replace other materials. In the packaging field, for instance, plastics simply make the designer's job easier, give him almost unlimited possibilities in color, style, structure, and new functional utility. What other material can provide an unbreakable, squeezable bottle? Vinylite plastic materials can be made beautiful in all kinds of ways. Texture, pattern, color, dimension. But their true design characteristic is functional. They don't fade readily, won't tear easily or ravel. And they require no laundering. A damp cloth cleans them. Vinylite upholstery complements every color in the spectrum. And it's scuff-proof, snag-proof, and more durable than ordinary coverings. 
And while you're on the woman's angle, think of the freedom vinyl plastics have given fashion stylists. Now they can make an ensemble mildew and waterproof, as well as colorful, lightweight, quick drying all at the same time. That's true. So without trying to change the face of the world, plastics have helped the designer to lift it up a good deal. And we really haven't even scratched the surface yet. Now I've got to peek. I'm sorry. You'll see them someday, I hope, when they have been proven. And when we figured out the right material, and we've figured out how to manufacture them. You see, it takes teamwork, my dear. I hope we weren't disturbing you. Couldn't sleep a wink. And I'll know who to call on if our meetings need Sparky. And I'll know who to call on for cigars. Oh, then you heard the message. Twin girls, how about that? I told you I couldn't sleep a wink. You know, I've been thinking about my poor wife. For six solid weeks, she's done nothing but plan that nursery. You should see that room, Dunk. She shopped every store. There isn't a plastic item for babies that she hasn't got ready and waiting. But I accused her of not leaving enough room for even one baby, let alone two. <laughs> She's gonna have to go out and do it all over again. I'll bet you pay for it. <laughs> well, what do you think of this gang of lecturers? I'm fascinated. It's an entire new, a new world. We call it the Fourth Kingdom, the Kingdom of Scientific Research, which gave us plastics. And I've seen it all happen with my own eyes within the span of my own years. But how is it all possible? There are so many products, so many different kinds of plastics. Well, it must be one of the biggest industries that's ever. It is. And it got that way simply because it fills so many, many human needs. We're passing over the Bound Brook plant right now. That's where we're headed. There are many great plastic plants all over the country. It's an industry that's vast in raw materials and equipment. But the real industry, the real heart of plastics, is in the minds of men. Men working in the many research and development laboratories, working on new materials and new uses for the materials we already know about. And manufacturers like my good friend Casey, who have had the vision to see a whole new world of plastic products designed by other men like Harmon, oftentimes to completely new specifications. Specifications that are always changing to fit our rapidly changing world. But believe me, miss, over the years, I've seen many such changes. You've spent your whole life in this business? Oh, no, only 40 years of it. They told me it wouldn't be a steady job when I took it. But all I've seen is nothing, nothing, compared to what you will see and what my grandchildren will see. How about my grandchildren? Oh, you're just a Johnny-come-lately. Wait until you're an old hand like me. They're wonderful. I saw them at the airport. You should see them on Christmas morning. I'll bet you play Santa Claus for them. That's my job. And even if I do say so myself, I give a pretty convincing performance. And when I think of what the plastic age has done for children, in the way of toys and gadgets for recreation and amusement, <laughs> it does my old heart a world of good. I often wonder how our designers can keep pace with the demand for these things. But they keep coming out with new ideas and better ones all the time. And new things add a surprise, a zest for living that none of us ever outgrows. Most of us are preoccupied with just the necessities, but we all have those cherished moments when the whole world opens up and smiles. From season to season, plastics contribute their share to the joy of good living. Winter, summer,
What am I doing? Living in the past? We all know what has been accomplished in the last 40 years. What's wrong with that? Reviewing the achievements of the industry might add a stimulus to our convention. And top it off with a forecast of the great things to come for your grandchildren's grandchildren. A good idea. Yes, I like that. Particularly that part about my grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> I'm inclined to side with Casey. I don't think anyone is more sentimentally disposed to the past than I am. We're in a business that has made centuries of progress within a 40-year lifespan. And I like to think I had a little stick in that pond before it got to be such a big lake. <laughs> but standing where I am in the present and knowing what I do about the years behind me, I can't help but feel that we're at the threshold of something far bigger, of far greater uses for our materials. I'll buy that, Dunk. Our whole aim should be slanted toward the future. Lemonade, gentlemen? Thank you. Certainly, plastics are recognized as the contemporary material of our age. And it's easy to look a few years ahead. And we should. That's why we're here, to chart the future course, to write new chapters into the history of this new kingdom, and add them to a book that will never end, because there is no end to the imagination of men. The curtain is about to rise on a new era of development. Let us give it a name. How about flight into the future? That's it. Excellent. Oh, why didn't I Very think of that? Good. Yes, good. Let that be our keynote. Flight into the future.